What what do you uh, what's what do you think is the wildest escrow story or, that you've come across in your twenty years of or signing or so, yeah story signing yeah it could be anything. So I had it was probably last year around Christmas time that there was a contract seller was going to sell to this um, young family, and for some reason or another the seller was going through a divorce, mm-hmm. and so the you know the wife signed off. And then um, the husband was supposed to come in and sign, refused to sign. I'm not selling. Yeah. So with an escrow, so if you have, you know, so if you, you know, you're in a contract. So if you sign the contract, I mean, we were at, the buyers had loan docs. They were supposed to come in and sign. And so the agents were like, well, he's refusing to come in and sign. I can't get him in to come in and sign. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the buyer's agent was like, well, what do we do? I said, well, we still continue the transaction. Your buyers need to come in. They deposit funds. They show that, you know, hey, we're, we're still committed. You're in a contract. This is what you do. So you bring in your funds. You come in and sign. So the young couple comes in and signs. So they're living in an RV, Mm -hmm. expecting to be in their home within before Christmas with their two young children, probably under the age of five. Mm -hmm. And seller just refuses. He will not sign. So the buyers come in and sign. And there's a motion. So again, you know, when you're just, Mm -hmm. you just, you know, you're there. It's like I said, you know, you just have to, you just have to sign. You never know what's going to happen. He may agree to come in and sign. Um, So... Close of escrow day came, the buyers performed, lender was ready to fund, still seller. Nope, I am not selling. I don't have anywhere to go. I am not selling. Mm -hmm. So buyers were like, you know, their hands were tied. They're like, well, what do we do? So I said, well, at this point, you know, you, you, you talk to an attorney and, you know, you, you litigate it, you take it to the court and, you know, you have a legally signed contract, so you pursue it. So after that, I, you know, I don't remember the transaction. I think I was on vacation but I never really followed up with it to find out what had happened. I think it had eventually closed. Well, I was at a golf tournament this summer, and I ran into the buyer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, how are you? You know what I mean? He goes, yeah. yeah, you were the one that signed us on the house, remember? And I was like, going, oh, my gosh, how did that turn out? So there was a lot of emotions. You know, mm-hmm. both sides of the buyers were not happy. But he said, you know what, in the end, he said, we eventually closed. He said, we eventually sat down and talked to him. He was, he was an older gentleman didn't have anywhere to go. So it was, it was just all this emotion. And he said, we got to know him. Mm -hmm. Um, and we worked it out. We're in the home. And he goes, you know what, after all of that negative emotion, he said, we got to know him. We still talked to him. We figured it out and it closed. Wow. And he said, you know what? And it was just like for, and it it was just, it just, it was just a great story, you know, Mm -hmm. like you, you follow up with it. And he said, you know, uh, all in the end, it all worked out the way it was supposed to work out. We got into the house they helped him find a new place and then it closed. They the buyers helped him find a new place. Well, I don't know if they well, I mean, yeah. but it, it, it you know, for out. some right. for some reason mm-hmm. they they came up to an agreement that worked for everybody and yeah. And it happened. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Do you remember uh I think it was maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago. Um you weren't the escrow officer. I was it was in a different deal in your office or a different escrow officer in your office. Mm-hmm. Um I'll just tell the whole story. So, I get this listing this, this person I know from the community and um, I do a market analysis for, her. and so it's just, it's, you know, I, I thought maybe we could get 500 or something for it, you know? And she said, just typically like a lot of sellers do like, well, I want to shoot for, um, no, I don't, maybe that's not how it worked out. Well, I, I said, you know, I think we can get 500 for it. And, you know, and she's like, well, you know, let's try and push it up a little bit and see what happens, you know? And she wasn't too strong on it, but, we ended up listing it for like five fifteen, mm-hmm. and uh, before we even get it on the market, she was asking me. She's like, and I typically like tell, advise my client. I'll tell them what to do, but I advise my clients like you probably shouldn't tell, like your friends and things like that, and like what you're listing your house for because you know they have people that come. You know they, mm-hmm. they have. You know, your friend will say, oh, I want to buy the house. And and then you don't have the opportunity. You feel bad because you don't have the opportunity to put it on the market. And so it's better to just, like, leave it alone and all, you know, and just, like, put the house on the market and just let it happen. Especially with in this, I think it was in late in 2020 or 2021, you know, in that whole rush of everything. I was like, it's best, if you want to get your best price and your best terms, it's better to just put it on the market mm-hmm. and, and not have any, like, side deals. She's like, all right, well, I really feel like I need to tell my group of friends. So she tells her group of friends that she's putting her house on the market and her friend's like, Oh, 
Of course. I always <laughs> love your house. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Can I come and look at it? Yeah. And, you know, it's been a while since I've been in there. And mm-hmm. and she's like, I, I've been thinking of moving. I, you know, I might be interested. And, she, and so she calls me and she says, you know, you know, this person wants to come look at my house and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, if you want to show her to her, that's fine. You know, but she should call her real estate broker if she has one, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, you should tell her that we're going to put it on the market, you know, and that you're not going to be accepting any deals ahead of time and she's like okay well that's that's reasonable i want that also you know she wanted to put it on the market and see what happened she didn't want to like favor her friend or do any of that kind of stuff which is i'm like great Mm -hmm. you're doing good and so sure enough she called her friend calls her real estate broker they come over and look at the house and like two days before putting it on the on the mls like i think they came and saw it the same day we got pictures Mm -hmm. you know she writes an offer of 15 thousand yeah fifteen thousand dollars over asking Mm -hmm. cash close in two weeks with 90 days possession after close of escrow mm-hmm. for free. Like that's a sweet deal. Yeah. yeah. Waving the inspection, like the whole wow. thing. Like she, yeah. like she's, you know, she told her like, I'm going to give you everything that you want and more. I just want to make sure that I get this house. I really like it. Mm-hmm. And you're my friend. And I want, you know, I want you to have time to locate your next property. She knew that she was moving into a different area and that they still had to find a place. And she ended up writing it. And the seller didn't want to accept it and because of what i told her you know like (laughs) and so she's like what do you think and i'm like well you know (laughs) that's a really good deal that's a really good deal (laughs) everyone i said before throw it out (laughs) insert foot in mouth again daniel good job um because that kind of stuff like never happens right especially 90 days possession after close of escrow for free wow she had a house that she, you know, was living in currently. She didn't need to sell it. Like mm-hmm. she was literally just, and so she just wanted her friend to have everything. Mm-hmm. And so she took her time and with reluctancy, she accepted the offer. Mm-hmm. And so we get through, you know, and so that part was all fine. You know, she was still like really uneasy about it. She didn't want to do it. And we get the preliminary title report. <laughs> Here's where you come in. <laughs> okay. It's coming we, back to yeah. me. We get, we get the prelim and there is, they have a loan on the property. They only owe like $8,000 on it. Like something silly. And she asked me even before we put it on the market, should I pay off the house? I guess, no, just leave it alone. Escrow will pay it off. It'll probably just with the time that it records and all that kind of stuff, it may just cause an issue and, and delaying everything. So just leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's a lien recorded on the property for the, for their loan. Mm-hmm. And there's another lien recorded on the property for a different loan that they took out in like 2001 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, is that they had the house built in 2000, took out a construction loan to have the house built. And then when the house was finished, they converted it and refinanced it to another loan with home Valley bank. See, we're back at home Valley Ah, bank here. (laughs) Okay, here we go. So they refinanced it with home Valley bank and this other loan. And then Wells Fargo bought the loan from home Valley bank, Mm -hmm. but never reconveyed the deed. Right. So when a, for, for anybody that's not watching, reconveying the deed is when one ba- bank sells it to another bank, the bank has to release, release right, yeah. release and record all that stuff. So they do that, and then they you know reconvey another deed in the name of Wells Fargo and all that kind of stuff. So they have to reconvey this deed, but they never did it. And this is like pre-mortgage crisis, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so this deed was still recorded on this property and never got, it never got released. And, and then what happened to home Valley bank in 2009 and 2010 in the mortgage hey, crash, uh-huh. they went away, <laughs> they closed shop. Right. They did. And yeah. so, and then of course, Wells Fargo is this massive conglomerate, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. bank com- mortgage company. And so this thing was recorded on there. And so it delayed escrow for like a month and a half. We were supposed to close wow. in two weeks. It like delayed it another six weeks while we searched for proof that Wells Fargo paid off that original deed mm-hmm. and recon and so and if it, like it came down to like Brenda was on the phone with my client bloop <laughs> Brenda um, yeah. pixelated yeah so this yeah. you don't have to bleep that out it's fine but she 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 got it on the she got on the phone with Wells Fargo and mm-hmm. was like 
talking to them and they're like, well, we don't do this and we don't do that. It's very confusing, you know, and they have to go back into their records and all this kind of stuff. Right. And so it eventually, it, it took me going into Isaiah's office, which is your, the manager of first American title at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it went into his, his office and we were on the phone with Wells Fargo for over two hours, mm -hmm. like talking to this rep, trying to like work our way around it. And eventually we figured it out. Mm -hmm. Like we found what we needed in order for them to, in order for first American to release the deed and move on. Mm -hmm. So it was a wild process, but it was just like, and, <laughs> and just, I didn't do anything wrong in that whole thing. Like if anything, yeah. I like made it happen with Isaiah and the other escrow officer. Like we all like, mm -hmm. and anyway, but she was like so irritated with me at the end of that thing. Like she thought it was my fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I don't know if she yeah. thought it was my fault, but she was, she was just, I think she was just frustrated with the process and I hate mm -hmm. that feeling, right. you know, because I mean, yeah. our goal is to make the process so simple mm -hmm. that it just, it's so stress-free and so awesome that they, mm -hmm. you know, that they just leave super happy right right and yeah. refer us to all their friends and family <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. right? yes yeah. but and sometimes it just doesn't yeah and sometimes yeah. It, and it has nothing to do with us we do our best to try and avoid that right you know but it was just man it was just a do you remember that i like came I into do. your office yep. and i was like do you uh -huh. have any suggestions on how to do uh, this yeah i tried to give you some yeah. i think i was going through some papers the other day and i think i saw the contact for rolls from yeah. oh yeah i probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, i remember that i think that's yeah. when i found that and yeah. your rolodex that you've had for 20 years uh-huh yeah i still have a paper one 